as we give everyone just another minute here, um, I thought I would just invite all of us to communally take some deep breaths. Uh, I don't know about you, but the barrage of news from all avenues, not just the TV, but social media, and then um, some of us are, are making this conscious effort not to talk about it in front of our kids and not to be negative around our kids. And, and um, we're putting up a lot of fronts right now. And my hope is that in this time, we can just take some deep breaths together uh, and really just allow ourselves to be. Um, if you feel like you want to turn off your video or if you're feeling emotional, please don't feel, don't hesitate to just take some time for yourself if you, if you need that anonymity, um, I totally understand. So I'll just start us off with a couple of deep breaths. So let's just take some breaths in through our nose. blowing out through our mouth. There's this image with anxiety that frequently our anxiety can be kind of right here, a hand just right in front of our faces. And with every breath we take, we can kind of push it further away, which if nothing else gives us an opportunity for perspective, right? That we as a society right now are so deep in the woods that we almost can't see the trees. But as we take these breaths together, let's just push that anxiety to the side. If for nothing else, we owe ourselves 30 minutes of comfort and relaxation. to start uh, by welcoming everyone. Uh, I am not a doctor or a therapist. Um, I am not processing this in any way different, differently than you are. Um, that said, my hope is to use what I have to um, bring some comfort to you and also selfishly to bring some comfort to me. Music is comforting to me. Uh, and I need to sing through this. I need to look to the arts to be able to help me process. I'll start by inviting you to just ground yourself. Notice where you are as you breathe deeply. I'm sitting in a chair. My feet are on the floor. Perhaps I'm surrounded by people I love. And as we do this kind of mindfulness and notice our breath, it, it just allows us to slow down our thoughts um, and soften our gaze a little bit and approach the world uh, with a little more peace than we have been. I think it's really important for us to talk about and think about anxiety in terms of productive and unproductive. Um, and this is what came from a healing session I had with one of my mental health care professionals this week, um, which was what kind of anxiety is productive and what is unproductive. And so perhaps what is productive anxiety is for me to say, what am I going to cook for dinner tomorrow? And when am I going to carve out time to take a walk if I'm homeschooling my son? And what, what seemed to be unproductive, at least in my life, was um, things that are out of my control. 
it's really hard not to get anxious about things that are out of our control. Uh, but it seems to be something that we need to communally try to do. We cannot control what's going on in our country, in our world, um, on the state level. You know, many of us have been told to not even go out, um, shelter in place. That's out of our control. So let's focus on what we can control. We can wake up in the morning, we can take a shower, we can get dressed, we can take a walk around the block. Um, if you, like me, have been walking around the block pretty frequently, people are just being nicer to each other right now. People are smiling at one another. There's a sense of communal compassion that did not exist, that did not exist before in that world where we were buried in our phones. So maybe, maybe we just need to pause and, and notice the good. Um, I won't say the good in the situation, I'll say the good in our days, right? Um, that perhaps having um, more time with our families and uh, more time to build Lego with my kids and less time in the office is not the worst thing in the world. So um, I've never done this before, so I'm learning as I go. I do welcome any suggestions you have. So I invite you to send me an email or a private message on Facebook. Um, I would, I would love to hear from you. I thought I would start this evening with a prayer for healing. Um, my favorite setting of Misha Berach is by Craig Taubman. And it goes like this. And I invite you in your space to listen, to sing, whatever you feel is going to heal your soul. Me Hope During This Pandemic by Rabbi Naomi Levy. We are frightened, God, worried for our loved ones, worried for our world, helpless and confused. We turn to you seeking comfort, faith, and hope. Teach us, God, to turn our panic into patience and our fear into acts of kindness and support. Our strong must watch out for our weak. Our young must take care of our old. Help each one of us to do our part to halt the spread of this virus. Send strength and courage to the doctors and nurses in the front lines of this battle. Fortify them with the full force of their healing powers. Send wisdom and insight to the scientists working day and night across the world to discover healing treatments. Bless their efforts, God. Fill our leaders with wisdom and the courage to choose wisely and act quickly. Help us, God, to see that we are one world one people 
who will rise above this pandemic together. Send us health, God. Watch over us. Grace us with your love and bless us with your healing light. Hear us, God. Heal us, God. Amen. When you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found, I got bridge over troubled water. I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled water. I will lay me down when you're down and out, when you're on the street. When evening falls so hard, I will comfort you. I'll take your part. Oh, when darkness comes and pain is all. troubled water I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled water I will lay me down I will A reading from one of my favorite books, Rabbi Harold Kushner, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. If prayer worked the way many people think it does, no one would ever die because no prayer is offered more sincerely than a prayer for life, for health and recovery from illness, for ourselves and for those we love. People who pray for miracles usually don't get miracles any more than children who pray for bicycles, good grades, or boyfriends don't get them as a result of praying. But people who pray for courage, for strength to bear the unbearable, for grace to remember what they have left instead of what they have lost, very often find their prayers answered. They discover that they have more strength, more courage than they ever knew themselves to have. We are not praying for a miracle. We are not praying for some unrealistic perfection that will magically happen when we open our eyes tomorrow morning. We are praying for strength to understand or come to terms with what's going on in our world. Uh, we are praying for courage to get out of bed in the morning and, and not drown in the anxiety and the fear. Um, and just by the very fact that I'm looking at all of you from different cities across the continent, um, I think it's clear that this prayer is working. Something's happening 
in our country, something really beautiful that is being overshadowed by a pandemic. But human, hum, the humankind is coming together in a way that um, I've certainly never seen in my lifetime. I know that we all are kind of scrolling social media and seeing what people are posting and what people are saying. And, and somebody posted today that in the year 2030, we'll be telling our kids, oh, the pandemic was terrifying and everything closed and we weren't allowed to go out on the streets and you know, we couldn't see our, our grandparents or get anything done. And our children will look at us and say, I remember the six weeks where I got to bake with you every day. I remember the days where instead of going to school, I got to sleep in and um, learn by doing art with my parents and play in the backyard. And, and that there's something kind of beautiful, um, not to sound naive, but um, I think we have an opportunity to turn this into something beautiful for our kids. Uh, how can we reframe this for them? And I think quite frankly, and maybe this is my own thought, but as a mother, I almost have a responsibility to shelter my child from the fear and anxiety. Because if I can't process it, I know that his little body doesn't stand a chance of processing it. So maybe it's, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world for us to hang on to a little bit of that beauty that is happening communally and say, there's something else going on here. Um, somebody said to me the other day that we are going to come out of this very differently than how we went in. There will always be a pre-coronavirus world and a post-coronavirus world. Um, and I think it's on us. It's upon our shoulders to decide what that post world looks like. What are we going to remember from these weeks? Are we going to remember the anxiety and the fear? Or are we going to remember the quality time that we spent? Are we going to remember the ability to connect with people from different avenues of our lives in a way that we never have before? Um, just my two cents. Yeah, he will have read song in brave fee. Yeah, he will have read song in brave fee. poem by Maya Angelou called Human Family. I note the obvious differences in the human family. Some of us are serious, some thrive on comedy. Some declare their lives are lived as true profundity and others claim they really live the real reality. 
The variety of our skin tones can confuse, bemuse, delight. Brown and pink and beige and purple, tan and blue and white. I've sailed upon the seven seas and stopped in every land. I've seen the wonders of the world, not yet one common man. I know 10,000 women called Jane and Mary Jane, but I've not seen any two who really were the same. Mirror twins are different, although their features jive, and lovers think quite different thoughts while lying side by side. We love and lose in China, we weep on England's moors, and laugh and moan in Guinea and thrive on Spanish shores. We seek success in Finland, are born and die in Maine. In minor ways we differ, in major we're the same. I note the obvious differences between each sort and type, but we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. The last piece that I wanted to share with you today um, is by a friend and a mentor, Cantor Benji Ellen Schiller. Uh, she wrote this piece, it's called Water to Water. It was uh, commissioned when um, they built Maim Chaim, the Living Waters Community Mikvah uh, in Boston. And it has this beautiful refrain, pain my beginning, peace be my end. And so I invite us, while I know we are not in a mikvah in this moment, I invite us just to take one more deep cleansing breath together. And as we exhale, I want us to just push out that negativity and anxiety we owe ourselves one night of peace and if we gather once a week for one night of peace may that at least carry us through water to water Father to son, mother to daughter, rivers will run, sisters and brothers see the reflection, water to water. Pain my beginnings, peace be my end. Blessings of heart, blessings of both. Mother to son, father to daughter, water to water. Blessings of light, blessings of love, weeping these tears, drops in the fountain, finding my courage, climbing this mountain, water to water. Rush to the sea, holding this promise, feeling so free, season to season, here for the asking, water to water. Pain my beginnings, peace be my end, peace be my end, peace be my end, peace be.
be my end. I want to thank you so much again for taking the time this evening to be with me. Uh, I'm very grateful. I'm humbled by your desire to spend time listening to me. Uh, so feel free to send me any thoughts, comments, um, any beautiful poetry or songs that you would love to hear. Um, and I will look forward to next week. I am very much looking forward to seeing your faces next week. Uh, you've brought me a great sense of comfort. And for that, I thank you. Good night.